Hi, welcome back. Um, I don't know if I call them video diaries anymore because they're not really a diary anymore. They're just more my thoughts and processes of what I see in the day-to-day -day life. Um, so an area I wanted to t cover on was proximal suspensory desmitis in performance horses and to a lesser degree race horses. It's not as common in race horses to see it um, because they tend to unfortunately run on their forehand. Um, so we get more front end issues. Proximal suspensory desmitis can present in a number of different ways. Can be some higher level horses will present as just poor performance, not quite pushing through. So coming out of the corners and dressage across the diagonal, um, or they'll start to present sitting on the behind end. Others will prevent, present as out and out lameness and you need to work them up. So often they will actually flex positive and that's a little bit abnormal for a tendon or ligament injury. They often won't flex positive. But you'll definitely get um, some of them will flex positive and we see that there so tarsal metal tarsal joints and proximal suspensory kind of they're right on top of each other so sometimes you can have a low grade uh, hock joint problem combined with the proximal suspensory it can be chicken and egg sometimes we'll, we'll help treat some of the proximal suspensory desmitis by managing the distal hock joints and um, with some corticosteroids in there um, and because the joint capsule actually comes out and around the top of the proximal suspensory so it's something you have to deal with so proximal suspensory desmitis first of all you've got to identify it um, the easiest way is nerve blocks um, that's where I take my life in my hands and stick a needle in the, the back of your horse's leg and um, so we block one of the nerves the that just goes in and innovates the proximal suspensory often I'll do blocks below that there just to make sure that we don't have a lower lower than that problem and you work your way up so just a reminder with the nerve blocks, we take them out at zones as we go up the leg to try and, try and lock, up, lock out the lameness. So there's three things happen. One, no change in lameness. Two, the horse comes sound. Three, the horse comes on that leg and goes lame on another leg, which is equally as common, which can be a little bit disconcerting for people because all of a sudden they say, oh yeah, look, it's, it comes on that leg, but it's lame on another leg. And that can happen and sometimes it can be the other back leg or it can transfer to a front end. And so, Lameness, when we see it, is a summation of what you add everything up. So you might have a 2 out of 5 lameness on, or 4 out of 10 lameness on the right hind, and a 3 out of 10 lameness on the left hind, so you might actually only see a 1 out of 10 lameness on the right hind. So it's something to get your head around, it can be a bit confusing at times. So proximal suspensory desmitis, a um, couple of things we can manage it. And it depends on your competition, competition schedule and also depends on what the long-term setup of the horse is. So you're, as I often say, if you've got your Olympic Games next week, we'll often manage it differently to a horse that's maybe six or seven, just coming up the grades and starting to get the problem. We might rest those horses, where other horses we might treat and try and see if we can get through the competition and then put in place a different management plan after that. So, um, we nerve block them, we identify them, then we'll often ultrasound them to assess for any changes. So a couple of things we're looking for is attachment to the back of the cannon bone. What does that look like? Um, second of all, is it enlarged cross-sectionally? And thirdly, do we have any damage to the ligament itself? Now, those are all part and parcel of it. We've got to look at those and assess those. And then we come down to treatment, which there's no right or wrong answer to be honest with these there's a couple of different treatment options we'll do sometimes we'll use corticosteroids in there if we just think it's a low grade inflammation and um, we'll medicate the hot joints at the same time uh, other times we'll use shockwave therapy so that's a sound wave that stimulates healing and decreases um, sort of causes minor inflammation which then drives the body to actually heal it and then last uh, well not lastly um, we then, if we think we've got an attachment injury and we've got changes to suspensory ligament, I have used platelet-rich plasma in these and injected into the area, and that's worked really well, actually. I'm really quite happy with that. And lastly is there's a surgical option. So one of the problems that these cause in pain this is they get inflammation of the ligament. You've got a big band of tissue running around the back of the hock that holds everything in place, so it gives that tight appearance. Well, that ligament, that band of tissue holding around that ligament, the plantar ligament, is really tight. And sometimes your actual soreness is because you get enlargement of the ligament, which then causes pressure. So you've got nerves running through this canal, and you get pressure on those. So anyone that's had carpal tunnel syndrome will 
will immediately understand what I'm saying when you get that compression injury and compression pain. So it's something you have to manage and you have to consider. So take home messages, it's common. We're seeing more and more of it and I'd love to know why um, because it is becoming more common. Yes, we're probably looking for it a little bit more, but I think we're definitely seeing a greater incidence of it and something we have to be aware of. And the other thing is that there's multiple management options. So you might hear from different people, have different vets. They've done it this way, done that way. There's no set answer. You have to really take it, um, the degree of lameness, the changes on ultrasound and the long-term outcome that you want. Um, and it is a condition you have to consider management of rather than fixing, to be honest. Um, I would consider it a management issue rather than a disease that we fix and we give drugs and it's better. So, hope that's interesting to you. I will try and get back a bit more regularly. It's been a bit of a time zone, but we're back. I'm back and hopefully keep going from here. Speak soon, guys. Cheers. Bye.